All right, so Sudhanshu, what do we have on, on the docket for you today? Uh, so uh, I have been looking into the phase eight. Okay. Oh, and yes. I have fixed all the issue, the, the issues related to models. Okay. So right now, like all the models are passing. Okay. And the tests for the models. So I think we can merge that. And uh, also, I have also started working on the SQL and accuracy scorer thing. Okay. Great. So, yes, so I'm actually waiting for the phase eight to merge, and then uh, I will I can make a full request on the scorer. All right. Fantastic. So, um, let's merge. Let's get phase eight. Okay. So, okay, so one thing that I noticed with this, though, is that, let's see. Okay, so, yeah, so the, the let's just check the, um, I think this is style, was style passing. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that we aren't having, okay, so style wasn't passing. Okay, so we should fix that. Oops. Um, okay, and then I wanted, so I wanted to check, I noticed that, um, these guys are failing, and I believe it's because of that stupid unit test thing, yeah. Yes. Um, I saw somebody else's project today was saying something about that, and I was like, ha, ah. <laughs> at least it's not just, that. um, okay, so this one is maybe, okay, so this was failing, but it looks like maybe it didn't even get to the point where, um, it was able to have that problem. So my, my question here really is like, is there something within these set of commits that, um, that that creates this issue or is it or was this issue already existing here um now my my guess is that we're going to find the issue if we fix this um so so i so in the high level i am thinking like this issue is with the high level dot five file yeah so actually in the high level dot five uh, uh high level file i actually changed some of the code there because uh when we actually run the model uh, to get the accuracy, there is this accuracy method in the high level, right? So uh -huh. in that, we are actually instantiating uh, the model context and the uh, accuracy score context. So there, uh, like when we had first merged this into the into the uh, the merge, here right on which i was actually working yes so here like i had to change the i had to pass in the accuracy scorer there yeah but previously it was model mm -hmm. okay so, so i feel like maybe this is the place where it's giving the issue yeah uh okay um let's see so okay so or else I, I don't feel so uh, there are many changes to it. Uh, yeah. Most of the changes were in uh, either in the documentations or some examples uh -huh. or some model tests which were fixed during the documentations. Yeah. So let's just take so. OK, so we're experienced. Let's just let's just sort of um, re. Re, um, okay, so we'll, we'll reset ourselves a little bit here. So we have, okay, so on this commit here, um, so uh, on origin slash, so currently, so currently on origin slash, <laughs> this really long, um, RC staging rebates yep. master. Was this this was the one? Okay, great. Origin slash da, da, da. at commit. Let's just make sure we record all this because this can get confusing. Um, oops. At commit, we did or were not seen the weird 
unit test issue, um, which is this, right? Um, okay. Does it want to copy paste? Sorry. Um, all right. Um, on the branch, so we should also say um, we were seeing a different error, which might be uh, masking the unit test error. Um, which is this import error. So the question that I have, and, and I think, you know, just to restate this basically for recording and otherwise, mm -hmm. is, you know, we've we've run into this error a million times, like all of a sudden unit test is trying to call a function because, I don't know, it thinks a function is a test case class. Um, so for whatever reason, it's trying to instantiate it as a test case. Um, and we don't really have much, much, much hope of, of fixing that from what I understand. So, um, so anyway, so we want to decide, what we want to do is we want to see if there's one commit, you know, between this PR and the, what exists that would have caused that maybe. Now, my mm -hmm. guess is that this would exist here. Um, so basically if we were to check out this branch, um, my guess is that we would find and fix this issue, that we would find the same um, the same problem. Um, uh, so, but we'll you can try that. yeah. So we'll try that, and then if if we find the same problem, then we'll just merge it and we'll fix the we'll fix it later. Um, but if we don't, then you know, then then we have to uh, deal. Or if we don't, then we know that it's something within these set of commits in the new PR, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so Python dash m unit test discover. Okay, so all right, uh, you're all mad about accuracy. Great. Okay, that's the right error. <laughs> um, so let's then import the stuff that we want. Or wait. So cannot import name. Okay, this is high level, yeah. Okay. High level wants to import accuracy, but it should want to import accuracy score. Yes. All right. Okay. I think that's what we wanted. Was there? Let's see. All right. A little bit different, different stuff happening so far. So <laughs> that's good. Yep. That's um, very... Okay, so all right, so that was sort of separate error, separate error. All right, so none of these things look like that error, um, <laughs> which is good because we're mainly concerned with that one error right now. Um, so we can say in their notes, so fixing this error, uh, um, seemed to uh, result in different errors, not the unit test accuracy error above. OK, so now we know that. Um, so now the other thing to test is this. So this might be, OK, so mainly, so this is actually what's causing the problem here. So when we run it with Python, so, so this is good, because this needs to be gotten rid of anyways for Python 3.8. So. Um, so, 
does cause win so we should say win run with uh, Python oh crap Sorry. so what we now know is we're basically well, you know one step farther into our 3.8 migration <laughs> So, uh, just, wow, nothing wants to go. Oh, God. All right, great. All right, so essentially what we need to do is, is let's just try to, so let's check out your PR. And let's look for any place where we were doing that. And let's maybe just change it. So coverage run. OK, so coverage run set up PY test is going to be a problem there um, because coverage run takes a file, not a module. So the rest of these places. So the rest of these places, do they take that dash s no, start directory? So dash s is to run a single test. So we just remove the dash s. So looks like we just need to sort of migrate these guys all to the unit test. Um, so it's Python setup test becomes Python setup uh, discover. So this guy becomes um, uh, Python dash m unit test. Um, because it looks like this is the format here. So basically we drop the dash s and we just say dash m unit test. And then these guys turn into the unit test discover command. Um, and hopefully, you know, this, <laughs> hopefully this works out. Um, okay. So, oh, here's a sheet. Um, so, okay. Okay. Alright, so we'll just try to change this and push it up. So, and this is how, just to show you guys how I usually do this. So, this is the command that I use here. So, um, I use, I try to do this find. So, I try to do a find on everything. And then, um, I skip that period. Um, I'd, I'd use the find command, grab all the fi Python files, and then I do sed, which does like a find replace. So you can give it this, uh, you know, this slash s syntax if you're familiar with that, um, like a regex type thing. Um, so, and then we wanted what dash m unit test. So, oops. Uh, let's actually do this slightly differently. Get Alice files rep uh, xargs. All right, great. Um, all right, so we're just going to grab all the files and then uh, find a replace it in all of them. Oops, did I do an echo? Yes, I did. All right, OK, so now we've got unit test wherever we had dash s. All right, great. So hopefully that it's those. And then we'll go and check to see if there's anywhere else it was used. And then in these places, we'll do um, we'll do uh, discover. Um, let's see. 
and then on this one with dots the ci one dash run so these coverage ones so this guy here and this guy here are going to be probably problems for us so we'll, we'll make sure that we uh we deal with that so let's just check out coverage i just want to show you guys how i'm going about this because uh, thought process was um okay coverage um So let's see, command line usage, run. Uh, okay, so great, we can give it a module. Fantastic. Uh, all right, all okay, right, sweet. Let's just try that then. So set up test. So let's just look for a unit test then. All right, so coverage run dash m discover dash v. So that should be fine now. So let's just try it. We're gonna try this. Um and we're gonna see if if, if this as the um all of that looks good to me. Stop me if it looks wrong to anybody. Uh, all right, great. So let's just go ahead and push this up. Um, so, uh, or what should we call this? Is this housekeeping? Is this cleanup? I think I changed cleanup to housekeeping because cleanup is, yeah, it's sort of the same word, whatever. So, cleanup. Um, uh, what did we do? We, uh, maybe we should call this, yeah. So we, uh, updated, updated test commands, run tests, um, and, uh, Python 3.9 dropped support for, um, set up by test um, this also fixes issues with uh, unit test trying to instantiate um, uh, functions as if they were unit test dot test case. All right, great. All right, so I'm going to push this up and we'll see what happens to this and then we'll come back to it. Um, yep. Hopefully the CI will, will run. Um, and then let's just do the black check. Okay. So updated record resources. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I used to, like, did we even touch that? That's dumb. Um, I don't think so. I think it was from the way back when we had like pinned the black version. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here it was. So this one basically, oh, and this is like from pre even that, like, so this is, what we'll do is we'll fix this style issue once we merge that branch in, because I'll just take that and I'll do like what we've been doing and I'll just, uh, well, I'll re, we'll, we'll rebase it in and then we'll fix up, we'll fix up that commit itself. Um, yeah. So let's just make a note that this is the offending commit and then we'll, all right, so. Well, this has been a very complicated um, process. Good job with this. All right, so um, commit has a black formatting issue. Uh, we'll fix that uh, when after rebase in PR 11.24. All right, great. Um, so we uh so we um changed over all the 
uh, test running commands to unit test discover uh, rather than uh, set up dot py test uh, we're rerunning CI to see if that helps. All right, anything else on this right now? Um, no, that's on. That. Okay. And the Mac OS stuff, did we see? It's Ooh. also failing because of the same, same thing. thing. Okay, let's fingers crossed yeah. on it. That's interesting that it doesn't fail on Windows. Huh. <laughs> That is really interesting. Now I'm wondering if any tests ran. Oh, hey! Wait a minute. It passed, actually, but inside it failed. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that's very sketchy. What the hell, Windows? It's just running the command and failing and then telling us the test is fine? What? What's up with that? Maybe they only have exit code zero. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really not helpful for the purposes of testing. What the hell? Um, well, that's really concerning. So let's definitely make an issue out of that. I'm glad we checked. <laughs> we, <laughs> hell, now I'm worried that we have failing Windows tests in the master branch. Um, how were we supposed to know? Thanks a lot, Bill Gates. Jeez. Uh, come on. Okay. At least they're running here. <laughs> okay, well, that could have been bad. So. so let's just make a. Okay, so CI, Windows, uh, failing tests do not cause CI job to fail. Uh, that's, a, that's a big problem. And then let's put the example here, which was uh, this job. Great. Um, and let's just download this while we're at it. All right. Great. Okay. So the rest of this, we're just. Um, Wow, okay, great. Everything else is passing. All right, so we'll cross our fingers that... Well, let's see what happened here. That was actually... So we ran... Let's just run this real quick. Let's actually run the test here and see what the hell is happening. Um, just to confirm, because we're about to run into a different issue as soon as the CI runs, and let's just deal with it now instead of moving on to the next thing. Um, okay. All right. I notice our coverage has dropped, so we're going to need to, we're going to need to go write some more test cases, make sure we have our coverage where it should be. Um, all right. This, okay, so tutorials, accuracy, MSC, that's an easy fix. Um, okay, it's a very easy TX reference for assignment. Um, that should be an easy fix as well. Let's see. Those are probably from the same thing, aren't they? Is this the master branch or the... This is your PR. Oh, okay. All right, so... Yeah, phase eight. All right, so... I think that... Yeah, okay, so this one's an easy fix. This is just add to... Um, add to... Test console test. Uh, docs. Yeah, this all needs to be restructured. Uh, we're talking about um, the. Okay, wait. No, this is, needs to be added to. 
we're talking about restructuring all of this testing for the documentation right now. Um, uh, so this will all change hopefully soon because um, we're trying to split out everything into the second party plugins. Um, all right. Um, Let's look at this ACTX real quick here. <clears throat> so if this instance actually saw accuracy score. Uh -huh, so. um. Okay, so, okay, so that didn't, well, no, that shouldn't have changed. So basically, these guys are trying to say that this is not an accuracy score. Um, and that test was... So let's take a look at this. And it's a CSV source, so you know it is correct. <laughs> um, so let's see. Where are we here? Okay. Test no async. Uh, test ML, test predict. So accuracy model test data. So you know what we should do? Yeah. Actually, we should probably be raising an exception here just in case. Um, no. This will probably... What? In the no async part, I think we haven't made any changes. Yeah, well, the no async part no. should just um, should just be a proxy for high level. Because um, if we look in no async... Yeah, all of these should just be async IO runs on the high level functions and then modifications mm -hmm. to the doc strings. Um, so I think, you know, I think what we should do here is really say, um, uh, just, just for the sake of, uh, yeah, for the sake of to do uh, replace this with so when we do the type checking so we have type hinting on a lot of things but we don't have it on everything um and i found this thing recently type checking i found this thing recently where was that pi uh it's called Python type pedantic. Is this it? Mm. Uh, there was a talk on this at PyCon recently. It's basically, it should be a way to validate this type hints at runtime, I believe. Yes, I think it is. Okay. I think this is the right one. Um, might be able to use this to validate type hints at runtime. All right, so MyPy, MyPy yeah. is also a good project. Yeah, MyPy. I think you know, and I think we mentioned MyPy in here. Or where was oh PyType? Okay, well I guess I don't know where MyPy. Why MyPy wasn't included in this list? <laughs> um, Oh yeah, actually, there's MyPy for some reason. It's down here, but not there. Um, so my understanding of MyPy does things uh, like for static checking, but this uh, Pydantic does it at runtime. Um, so it, it sort of lets you take... Um, so for people who, who may not have run the static type checker, um, you know, you can, you can get runtime validation as well. Um, so if for some reason, you know, you end up something doesn't get caught by the static type or checker, it'll catch it at runtime. Um, it does. Do you know if MyPy can do that as well? Because then we could just use one thing. 
No, I, I have only used it for starting. So. Okay. All right. Well, they may they may add that at some point, so we'll just keep our eye out for that um, as well. So, and this is why this is sort of like you know this is a long thing because we've got a bunch of places where this is not the case. Um, with static type checking uh, and maybe dynamic through something like. Uh, Pydantic uh, C issue number um, uh, 36, <laughs> issue 36. Wow, okay, this has been around for a while. Um, so we'll just say, you know, if not, I think we also have a bug here where um, this should be, so there's a, there's another bug here as well. So this this is, the, the idea behind this was that we could keep the stuff open, but I don't think we actually, I don't think I wrote a test case for this somehow, I swear. I, I think it was supposed to be under, so I think this, oh, where was it? Um, tutorials, models, uh, wait, load models dynamically, train. No, this wasn't it. All right, there was supposed to be, or was it the double context entry? Yeah, okay, so this, is this not getting tested? So, because this, okay, so what I'm saying here is basically the, this code must not be tested because the, this would break. So see if we go in here and it's given model and accuracy score. Oh, it's because it's train. It's train work. Train model. No, this should break too, right? Because we're saying if the instance, if the model is an instance of model, then create the model context. Otherwise, create this MCTX. Um, so basically, enter the first context, then enter the second context, and then use the you know use the second context. Um, however, this MCTX variable shouldn't be defined. You know, if uh, if there is if if you're passing a model context, um, so that's what makes me concerned that this might not be getting run. Um, uh, okay. Uh, okay. You can also do like if is instance model context. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's what we need to do. And I'm, I'm like, I don't really want to do it on this call right now. So I think we'll just create another issue. Um, <laughs> I thought there, I think I keep trying to create one and then I get sidetracked. So um, where was, um, make sure context can be kept open. Okay, well, this is not a very descriptive issue. Um, so in high level, okay, let's just link to it. So I'm really confused at why this isn't. Um, so let's just raise this. Um, raise this uh, error for now and that way we should catch the places that um, we didn't remember to change like for example if we run so if we run this test case again that was failing we should yeah we should get this type error now okay. yeah so now we should and now we'll know that we need to go change that test case um, and people will know that, you know, that's a, um, so anyways, um, I think, I think, let's see, so that will give us a bunch of, that will, what all were the test cases that failed, so these guys were probably all offenders, and then this thing where there's no path lip is confusing, but, so basically, I think when I push this, like, you know, this, when we push, so I'll push this, right? And then um, that should show us in the CI where there's other issues. So 
so we'll add this one, which is the adding of the um, uh, CI uh, docs uh, add uh, MSC or CI console test add MSC accuracy MSC tutorial to list of tests. Um, and then, so, and then this one, we'll add this, um, and we'll say, you know, um, that this is a type check, uh, type check on second argument to accuracy uh, ensure that second argument is an accuracy score all right And then this guy, and we should probably rebase this in somewhere. So, um, at level um, accuracy, fix type uh, annotation of accuracy score. All right, so let's see what happens here. Um, and then hopefully we should have a more, uh, I think, I think we will end up with a few, um, places that we need to, you know, a few, a few places like that one test case where we, we just need to update that and hopefully the rest of the test pass. Um, and when that happens then we can merge it all and then we are very close to merging this into master, um, which is very exciting. And let's just make sure that the other, I've noticed that. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure that this is two in progress. Okay. So what happened here? So we'd updated the commands. Let's make sure that this actually worked. Fingers crossed. Okay. So it did run the test. Great. So hopefully we should have some more helpful results in a second here. All right. Um, and then we're going to record this as a bug. So. Okay. Uh, and it is in all these places, so. So, and the gist of this is basically if we um, oh, and then we also need, don't understand why double context entry is passing because this no setup. So these should be run, but maybe they're not being run. Tutorials, double contracts, entry. All right, so these were, now we have another issue that says we're worried that these aren't running, so I might have screwed that up. When I, this is why I need to refactor all this. Uh, we're talking about with the second party plugins, refactoring about all of the, um, all of the testing of the documentation and the doc strings and all that into some more generic infrastructure so that all the plugins can be tested in, in, in one way. Uh, uh, like, so if you did like diff mail service dev create, um, and, uh, then you created a plugin, right. And, and you had some documentation that you wrote in there. Um, then, you know, you might have this one test case file that basically just goes and runs all of that stuff. Um, so any RST files, it tests and any doc strings within classes, it tests for Python doc test and console tests. So, and this is docs. 
Um, sorry. Test, docs, test, console, test. Um, I'm not sure if no setup uh, RST files are being tested. Uh, related. Um, what was that one that we were just on? Uh, uh, that issue one 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 two. Okay. body there. All right. Okay. I think we are good on this stuff for now. Um, thanks. That took a while. So, all right. So what else do we have today then? Um, so, so Sudhantra, do you have anything else? Um, yep. I have a small thing to ask. Okay. So for the accuracy scorer, for the SQL accuracy scorer, we have two things. One is the scorer, which will actually use the models context, uh, the models default scorer. And other one is the SQLN metric scorer, which I will be implementing from scratch. Uh -huh. So uh, so for the, uh, the scorer, which we will be implementing for the model, the default model. So how should I like ship it? How should you right. ship it? Um, yep. I think within the scikit-learn models, I would not package okay. it as its own plugin. So, um, so uh, add this under default model scikit slash accuracy.py or something, right? Okay, but uh, for for the for the default uh, scorer uh, scorer, it it will work fine. But we have this scorer which uses like different metrics, like. Right? SQL and metric scorer. So should that also be in the same model? Can you show me something to help me understand more what we're talking about? Do you have any like code that exists so far or anything? I'm I'm pretty I'm kind of lost at at, at, at what uh, this interface looks like. Actually, I have been working on it, but it's not completely. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um. So basically. So, Yes. So the thing is, we have in SQLAN we have two scorers, two types of scorers. Uh -huh. One is the one is which actually uses the model's default score method, uh -huh. and another is the uh, SQLAN metrics, which is which I will be implementing from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So for the default one which will be going to use the default uh, score. And so that will just grab into model context and yes. into the, okay. Not score yeah. Yep, okay. So that I can ship it with the model itself. Mm -hmm. But the one uh, where I'm implementing the scalar dot metrics, the, the new scorer which I'm implementing, mm -hmm. should that also come with this one? With, you mean like in model scikit? Yep. Yeah, I, I would say yes, right? Because if you're using Scikit, I think that, I mean, I think but so we could do, use the, yep, yep, you could ahead. use the score without using model Scikit. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I would say, okay, so here's the thing. Let's put it in model Scikit for now. Because we're going through, and and so good, good, you you're thinking about this the exact right way. Um, so should we uh, put this in model scikit? Um, DFL model scikit, or should we put it in DFL uh, accuracy scikit? Um, so uh, the scores could be used with non scikit or these scikit uh, models so they might want to be in their own package at some point um, yes. because so let's just say because we are 
uh, actively going through the um, second party uh, transition um, let's uh, not create another plugin at the moment uh, we uh, we um, um, we might want to do this later. Um, at the end of the day, um, you know, if there is, there's, so there's, there's something to be said for, you know, there's a, there's a certain code base size that comes with having, um, you know, like if we split out, you don't have to download, you know, you're only downloading the scores, right? If you want to use the scores, right? And that's just the abstraction around the scores. Now, there is also some sort of, you know, there's also like a trade-off to be had where, okay, like if if the scikit scores end up being like 500 lines, you know, is it really worth creating their own package for, right? Um, yeah. Maybe yes, maybe no. Um, but we'll, but that's, I think it's it's a great, great thinking. Um, it's exactly like the way that we're trying to think about this, right? Um, uh, I think let's just, let's just not do it right now just because it, I think it'll be, um, you know, more, more trouble uh, than it's worth to do at the time. Uh, definitely, definitely worth considering in the future. So, let's maybe um, let's maybe create an issue to track that too. Um, so, uh, so plugin uh, accuracy scikit. Um, should we split out uh, scikit accuracy scores? from uh, models um, and then I'll link to here um, for our discussion C2021 0615 meeting minutes okay um, uh, and I'll say that uh, Okay, great. Okay, now now we should have it tracked. Yeah. Great. So, anything else? Uh, no, that's it from my side. Thank All you. Right. Okay, so, Sahil, let's see. So, you had pull request. Um, let's see. Yes, I have three things to talk about. Uh, this is the first and foremost, 2128. Okay, um, 1128, 1128, perfect, okay. Um, so... Uh, I want some input on this, like, is it going to... Okay, oh, and let me just quickly address the... Um, so this one, I, where did that go? Long time decorator. All right, so this one, all right, so there is an issue and I keep forgetting to fix this. What happened to it? I think I forgot again, damn it. Um, I should just open a pull request and I, then I won't. Um, okay, so the thing is that in the refactor, of where'd it go in the refactor of the where is it uh, docs I'll read the commit I'm just gonna read the command message because I'm struggling here um, where's the stupid thing uh, all right, so basically there's the docs are not the doc tests are not running is the problem. Um, and this is so so I don't want to merge that until they are being run in the CI because um, because obviously then we don't know if it's working or not. Um, because it's not running the it's not running the tests either. It's actually not running anywhere. <laughs> um, where did I put that? 
I got disconnected. Oh, uh, basically the docks. I haven't merged the docks one yet. Um, because what the hell? Because um, because there's a there's there's a problem with the the way that the tests are being run. Um, where is this stupid thing? Great. Okay, I forgot to see. I keep. So the thing is, I keep going to do this, and then there's then there's a problem, and then I don't finish it. Um, so where is this? So if you look at, and let me just look at master. Tell. All right. So docs or test doc strings. What the hell? I swear, I just did this. Um. Okay, so here, so this is the problem. Um, basically, you see, look at this. So the way, so this is creating a test case class, and then it's assigning methods to it. Um, and actually, I think this is part of the three point nine thing. That's what happened. Um, okay, whatever. Sorry. Um, the problem is that this is actually creating a tuple. Because I think I, I probably put an extra something and then it formatted with black and then now it looks like this. And so essentially, instead of creating a, a you know, this function returns a function, um, which becomes the test case to run. And so this is supposed to do the doc test, the Python doc test, but instead it's a tuple, so it doesn't actually run the test case. So none of the test cases are being run right now. So yes, actually that happened. I, I tried hours and hours and it was not running. Really yeah. <laughs> I yeah. have no clue that it is not running. Yeah. I just wrote wrong things in the doc stream, but it was not running. Yeah, so this is this is a problem, obviously. Oh, okay, great. What happened here? What happened? Fuck. Okay. Um merge. Why did you merge commit? Why did you merge on pull? Oh my god, I hate this. Um, this is helpful. The walk reflogs. This will show you where you were. So, arch model saving and loading. Moving from phase A to master. Okay, this must have just been. Okay, we were just doing the architecture stuff. Okay, so if we run, if we do this thing and we change this, um, I believe we run into issues, which is why I didn't. Let's see what happens. Um, I think there's some bugs, which is annoying. I was going to push it, in, but now you guys know, so... I think I keep bringing it up in the mentor meeting, and I keep forgetting to say it here. Um, but this is this is a thing that's going on. So, um, uh, yeah, I had hesitate to push it because it's going to break the CI in the master branch, but it should probably just be breaking it. Uh, but that no, that just makes things confusing. So, um, anyway, so let's just see what happens here. Um, okay. So this is why this has not been. I. Yeah, I meant to respond to you, and then I kept trying to fix the bug, and then I forgot to say anything. So, um, oh, yeah, this. What the hell? This is weird. Um, this cache download unpack archive stuff is not making any sense because it's trying. Anyways, this is the bug that I ran into, and then I, I, I sort of, you know, I, I hit a wall there. Um, and then these guys are all. Um, so, yeah, there's bugs, basically. Um, so let me just create an, a, a, a PR for this. Um, I think this is on the this is on the computer with the hard drive that's failing. That's what happened too. Um, tests, doc strings, uh, tests. Uh, make sure we are 
prefix tuple instead of function for test doc string. All right, so basically, um, you could grab this change and then try to run just your test, but I have a strong feeling that this is the thing. So I have a strong feeling this won't work without unit test mock stuff. Um, so because, let's see, where was it? Yeah, so I don't know if this is going to work. Um, and this is why it had held off, because I was hoping that it, it doesn't really help you to not have the ability to test it right for me to say anything. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, where is it? Okay, yeah, so just the fact that it says exactly one second is probably not going to be what it is, right? Um, it usually, it, it, it sometimes drifts, right? So we might need a, a mock. Yes, uh, yeah. I changed it in the main test as well. It was not doing ex exact one second on all machines. So you changed what? It, it, it made a fair, the, the main test case, you know, like. Oh, yeah, in the main test case, one yeah. One second, exact one well, second, then I. Put in the regex there. Great, yeah, great. And so this is probably so probably what we need to do is within here. Okay, and I didn't push it. See, this is like for some reason I'm having a really hard time with this stupid bug. Um, all right, so let's just create a pull request. Chpr create. Okay. Um, now, hopefully, I won't lose that again. Um, and you guys know what's going on there. So you could grab that and you could apply it here if you wanted to try it. Or, you know, you could just make make that same change and then try to run the test case. So uh, check out. Because um, then if we do this, um, uh, let's grab this guy. Um, Okay, and now Python dash m unit test discover dash k log time. Okay, yeah. So, um, okay, so it won't output the logs actually. So that might be a good thing, anyways. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Simple function took one second. I wonder if there's a way. Hmm. Um, but it does on the actual, like when you run it. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Um, sure, let's see, logging. Yeah, okay, so it does, it, it is, um, so it is obviously, it is doing it, um, and it is the right time. So, I wonder, hmm. So, let's see. We, we don't need to worry about that. That's nothing anyways. Yeah, I mean, you could just take it out. You could just sort of, and this might be, this would sort of solve all our problems right away. Um, you could do something like this where you say, oh, I've got a bunch of white space. Um, so, you could just say something like, Oh, this is not the right way to do this. Uh, with logging enabled, can we make it logged standard out actually? Um, I wonder if we can just make it log the standard out and then we're done. Um, basic config. Where's the basic config function? File name, file name, stream. So we could say stream.
we might be able to do this. Uh, So level, we set the level. Set the level, um, tell it to log to standard out. Um, just getting rid of the white space. Uh, this check is purposely forked um, until so now we can try this expected expected got simple function uh, basic config stream equals system level equals login so here's another thing um, I don't know if you guys have seen this. I think I forgot to, but this scripts, um, where is it? Scripts, uh, doc test. Oops. So this can be helpful. Yeah. So you basically say scripts, doc tests. Uh, log time. Um, no. Okay. What? Um, all right. I'm sorry. I need to record the connections. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. So I was just, I was just going to run the, the, I was just going to pull out the doc test from the file because it's not. So I was thinking what we could do is we could just say, hey, logging library, log to standard out, and then we could capture this output here. Um, however, that doesn't seem to work for some reason. So um, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we should do here. Um, but we do need to make sure that it passes. And so I guess what we could do is We'll just go back to this way, and we can just do it this way, where we can say, hey, you know, this is an example, right? Um, and uh, you should see this if you have login enabled. Um, so you can just, you know, say, if you have login enabled, and we should import login and enable it. Alright, so you should see, right, because it looks like you, did you see what I just tried to do here? So I tried to make it so that logging basic config set stream is sys standard out, uh, but that didn't end up doing yes, anything. Actually, it, it works. It, it should work. It should work, but <laughs> it, yeah, it should work, but it, it didn't say, I mean, it said that. It, it didn't, it, you know, it said, it's basically said it's not, um, you know, it might be because, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that really doesn't make any sense to me why it wouldn't work. Um, but either way, you know, it didn't, so it didn't work. Uh, we can. Related to this, I wanted to know that like our test environments different than normal environments because sometimes it is difficult to discover get in certain environments and testing and all uh, yeah, I mean, test environment. Are there some on test environments? Uh, well, so there's a lot of different things that have. I mean, there's a lot of different kind of test environments that we we have. Um, so and 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 so let's see. So there's basically three. Um, there's the doc test, which is this right. We're looking at doc tests right now. Um, and then there's the regular test cases, um, which is you know like the one that you'd written um, that's up there. Um, so the regular test case is just, you know, that would be this, right? And then there's the console tests. And the console tests are things like the restructured text files. Um, so like um, uh, where we just saw that, um, 
let's see, um, tutorials, models, um, or double context entry. So this stuff here, right, with like the colon test on it. Um, so restructure text files with that, or you'll see it. Um, um, you'll see it within some of these. Uh, within some of the doc string classes as well. Um, so like this. Um, so, so yes, there are multiple testing environments. Um, and yeah, I guess do what, what else do like, what, what questions do you have about that? Do you have any questions? Oh, we might have lost them. All right, so we'll just put this. So basically, see who are you there? You're on mute. Oh, we might have lost them. Yes, but uh, I'm getting really, uh, don't like, I'm really getting bad. Really bad. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so. Essentially, we have mul there are multiple testing environments. You know, there's the three, and they do operate differently. Um, and, and so we we've done we've done a lot of things to try to make them you know more integrated um, into the main unit testing environment. Um, but it's not you know they still have their differences. Um, the one that's going to be the most straightforward is always you know the regular unit tests. Um, things get a little bit different. You know they get a little bit weirder as you get into the doc tests. Um, we're still leveraging the the regular doc test infrastructure from Python. We're just that's all in the standard library. We're calling out to it. Um, the console tests are a custom thing. Um, but yeah, so so basically, there are some quirks, and I'm assuming you probably can't hear everything I'm saying, but but you know you can look at the you can look at the recording for hopefully a clearer sound. So yes, actually now I can hear. Okay, great. Um, so basically, yeah, there's the three things. Um, yes, yes. Sir. Okay, you got. I, it. I, I heard it. Okay, perfect, great. Um, do you have any questions on any of that, or? No, it, it's perfectly fine. Okay, great. I yeah. To talk about. 1128 okay. and yeah, that's 76. All right, great. Um, and let me just sort of commit this and push it up. Um, so, and then you understand, so basically what I what I was saying here is it looks like we weren't successful. I don't know. We, redirecting the standard out didn't work first try, so whatever, uh, we would have had to wrap it and, and probably do some things to make sure it always says one second. So this is actually sort of an easier approach. We can just say, hey, enable logging. You should see this in the output, and that way we don't have to do comparisons and, and hacky stuff to you know do unit test mock. Um, so hopefully that that uh, fixes that. So I'm just gonna uh, rebase this and push it back up. Um, uh, that's not what I wanted to do, but whatever. Um, and I'll just uh, fold that into there. Um, wait, what happened here? All right, um, and I'm just going to rebase all of this into one thing here. Um, oh well. Hmm. So. All right, so I got rid of the white space, um, and then change the what happened here. Oh, great! What happened? Um, this is where this log walk reflogs is good. Let's just go back to where we just were here. That's nonsense. You can't be pointing. Okay, it is the same place. Um, okay. Uh, 
support in. Oh great, I did that minus 34 and I think it took me all over the map here. All right. All right, sorry about this. All right, so remove white space and uh, move logging to separate code block. There we go. Um, did I add? Okay, I didn't accidentally add anything. Okay, great. All right, so I think we should be good to merge this now, provided the checks pass. Um, does that? Okay, so now let's talk about this guy. <clears throat> so. Um, What do you want? Do you want a guide discussion here, or you want me to? What, what I was uh, hoping to do was to use SHUtils archive unpack thing, but mm -hmm. the later on it would have been difficult to add new formats. So I switched to this supported archive formats dictionary thing, and uh, then I thought that I will just put those classes in. Uh, that would handle like for tar files. There is a tar file class in uh, built-in standard library, and for zip files similarly, and all and all. But uh, then I realized that uh, they cannot be used in a, in the same way. Like they have different interfaces. So I created a base class, which is this one, like the helper base class, which is basically an abstract base class. So uh, whenever you need to implement a new method, new uh, what what whatever I should what I should call it uh, a new format mm -hmm. to support just uh, use this base class and uh, implement those two methods and all other methods depend on those two methods so it becomes uniform for all the okay so let's see to file okay mm, da, 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 da. Okay, so this is basically just everything in the directory. Okay, so I think that we should not do this until we know more of what it looks like from the model side. Um, because we don't... Okay, so let's see. Okay, so first of all, Let's make sure that everything derives. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. So the standard pattern that we follow is to have everything, every object be like one of those base configurable objects. Um, and so let's see. If we were to look at, for example, um, model. Um, so model is so base data flow facilitator object context and base data flow facilitator object. So this is so this is sort of so we try to make everything follow this pattern because we don't know if at some point it might not follow this pattern. Um, basically, or we try to make everything follow this pattern because this allows us to do um, this. Basically, makes it so that if we run into problems, like uh, let's see. I'm not not able to describe this eloquently. Um, so by always following this pattern, um, it makes all of our code like 
consistent. Like everything is consistent to the way every class is used throughout the entire code base. So everything has a config. Um, everything does double context entry, and that way um, you um, you know you never you always end up using the same pattern no matter what object you use. Um, and it 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 preemptively solves issues where you might need to do um you know network access or something right because uh, you have two two spots where you where you can do asynchronous io you can do it on the first context entry um which is sort of something that is alive for the lifetime of the object or you can do it on the second one which is usually alive for you know a smaller a smaller lifetime uh you know the, the lifetime of, of an operation um uh, so, for example, like with the model, the first context entry is, is you know, when the model is instantiated and so that we might, you know, load load the directory. Um, and this is, you know, where where we might, um, for example, with the with the file formats, this is where we might um, load. We will probably use this. Um, we'll probably where is this so. We will probably do within a, uh, a inter method. We'll probably do the loading of of, of the um, of the of the data from the archive, right, and put it into a directory. Yes. So these are just uh, utility functions, right? Do we really need to do that thing in it? So, so the thing is, what you'll find is, <laughs> so what you'll find is. Everything starts out as 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 um, you know, like oh, it just does this and it just does this, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, what if the zip archive you know needs to take certain arguments? Um, for example, some of these archives are compressed at different. Um, let's go to let's see what's a good example here. So, um, uh, let's look at zip file. So say I wanted to create a zip file. Say I wanted to store my uh, model in a zip file, but I wanted to do it um, in compressed with bzip2, right? Um, so now, now if I had, um, so if I don't follow the config, the standard config format, I now don't have a way to specify that that it's a b like that I wanted to do it um, with bzip2. Right, um, because I'd need to, you know, it would be the extension would be dot zip, but I'd need to pass the the what is this? This is a compression thing. I think this is compression. Or yeah. Okay, so what you what what you're trying to say is all the helper classes should have a config so that we can uh, pass them certain parameters if we want to. Yes. Yes. Um, so basically, and that's, so, so every, as long as everything has a config, everything can be every. As long as everything follows this pattern, uh, everything can be configured. Um, you know, through through any interface. And when I say any interface, I mean the Python API, the command line API, the HTTP API. Um, you know, all all of that stuff, right? Because we have to support many different interfaces, um, and and we need the ability to make sure that um, you know they're all they're all they all, all of the, because all of these classes get get configured. A lot of this project is actually configuration, um, and 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 the way that we configure the different plugins and stuff like that, um, because you know we have to standardize everything um, to be able to work across different different uh, you know uh, different frameworks and stuff um, and underlying things. So uh, so basically, we always try to. If you're going to create new classes, um, you know maybe and. This might be this might be a place to create a new class, and it might not. Um, but if you're going to create new classes, then you should follow that format, and that also mean that also it all. The other thing that it does is it allows us to hook into the plugin system. Um, so you will you will register pretty much everything gets registered as an entry point, and that way, if you have um, you know different archives that are not a part of the main. So now, say say there is, for example, RPM file. Um, there's you know, say say you have something stored in an RPM, um, and that's not one that you can, but um, it's not one you can pack into, but you can unpack um, at least with the Python module. Um, so if you have something stored in an RPM file, we might create you know uh, the XML hyphen archive hyphen RPM, right? And because now we have this archive, a set of archive plugins, um, and that way you could you know you can have these external to the main code base um, plugins. Um, 
and uh, you know you can you can use various third party libraries as as you will, right? Um, and so that's why we always follow that same pattern. Um, in this case, in this case, let's see. Let me. Uh, um, was let's can you can you can you send me where's your uh, proposal here? Um, I don't have it handy. Can you send me the copy of it real quick? Yes, uh, shall I send it on Gitter? Yeah, yeah. I just dropped it. Okay, great. So, okay. So, I think what we should do here is, wait. So we have two. Let's see. I think that, and this is, sorry, I'm sorry I haven't had my meeting with you guys yet um, uh, for our one-on-one. -on -one. I've been extremely busy with things. Um, okay, so, yeah, okay. Now I remember what I was thinking here. So, the one thing that we'd like to get to eventually is the use of, like, more operations rather than, you know, creating plugins for everything because operations become like a generic, you know, you, you don't have to implement the plugin type for everything if you just have an operation. Um, so, and, and the operations are, they already follow that pattern. So, um, so I think what, what we should focus on doing here probably is, um, So, all right. So, say so. The premise of this is basically like didn't didn't we talk about how? Uh, where did it go? I just said okay. All right, so yeah, so yeah, rename directory property to location. So you, okay, so you, you, all right, so I think what, what you should focus on is really just doing like a, a, a the compress and decompress, right? Almost as, as functions rather than, than methods. Um, because what you can do is you can take, um, Let's see. Let's see here. So uh, we're we're running pretty long today. So do you guys want to have another meeting? Do you guys want to keep going, or do you want to have another meeting on later in the week um, on Friday? Or we can have. I think we can take this one on one too. Um, so let me look at my. Let me look at my calendar here. <laughs> 